Good evening everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen on day five of our 12 cooking days till Christmas. I like to think about what number is day five today, which is really exciting because we're not quite halfway there, but we are definitely on our way to creating some amazing, fuss-free, healthy food for Christmas. So thank you for joining me. Let me know where you're coming from today. Of course, I'm in my kitchen in Sydney. Um, let us know where you are joining me tonight. I'd love to um, have a bit of a chat. And also, if you've got any questions as we're going throughout this class, please feel free to ask. Now, tonight's class is all about sponge cake because I have to say that um, sponge cake is, though we may not eat this on its own, it is part of a dish or a recipe where Christmas isn't Christmas without it and that is trifle so you've got to have sponge and trifle but as hard as I, as I may have looked for um, a healthy trifle in the store there are none available so um, trifles uh, sorry sponge cakes tend to have lots and lots and lots of sugar hi to Jersey coming to us from Palmerston North in New Zealand thank you for joining us um, you know uh, sponge cake have lots of sugar um, they tend to be you know, like made the ultra processed foods as well so they, they don't tend to go bad which is always a bad sign if something doesn't actually decompose and I always wonder of that about shop-bought trifle is how come it's still not you know it's not even kept in the fridge it's kept on the shelf which is a little bit of a worry so um and to Miley joining us from Perth and from the beautiful Christine I know exactly where you're coming to us from in the gorgeous Gold Coast as well so thank you guys for joining me tonight for the sponge making master class as I was saying you need sponge to make trifle simple as that and you need trifle in order for Christmas to happen because it does not happen in our house unless there is a big big bowl of trifle so tonight's class which is how to make a sponge cake and yes you can use it to make trifle you can use it to make anything where you would normally have sponge I'm totally thinking about lamingtons as well um, come Australia Day next January we could make lamingtons with our own healthy sponge but also um, sponge cake you could even make a Victoria sponge as well and I'll talk you guys through that very simple process once we've actually gone through the sponge cake too so if you're looking for the restaurant uh, hi to Coral joining us from Tonga, and also to Annette joining us from Tasmania welcome ladies thank you for being here um so if you are um if you are considering joining me tomorrow, yes, we are doing that trifle, but tonight, as I was saying, it's all about the sponge. And um, it's one of those recipes that is, I think it's got a bit of mystique attached to it, like it's really hard to make. It's actually really not that hard to make. Um, it doesn't take much time at all. So I'm gonna talk you through that sponge recipe. If you are looking for the recipe, it is available um, through my ebook, Bridget's Healthy Christmas, which is 50 festive recipes for Christmas and New Year's and the holiday party season. So a really awesome ebook that you can order and it will be delivered to you straight away so it's automatic delivery on that ebook as well and if you want that ebook you just go to Bridget's Healthy Christmas dot com Bridget's Healthy Christmas dot com all right let's get into the recipe as I was saying it is fairly easy to do so easy in fact it only takes a few ingredients and that's the store-bought ones they have lots and lots of lots of ingredients that are totally unnecessary so let's get into it come on down to my bench take a look at my apron today I've got a little bit contemporary as you can see lots of really cool colors it goes with my white um, my white dress I've got on today I quite like it it's a traditional sort of more of a chefy type apron except chefs would never wear um, aprons with lots of colors all over it even though I think it's totally awesome so apron today is looking pretty good the recipe today is looking even better as I was saying it is sponge so let's start off with the basics so I am going to be using today to make the sponge cake I am going to be using my KitchenAid um, which is my electric you know stand mixer and the reason I am doing that is because it does require quite a lot of mixing so I wouldn't suggest you attempt to make a sponge by hand that's number one this is something you kind of want to avoid in terms of doing it by hand you want to use a stand mixer if you have one with a whisk attachment as well. If you don't have a stand mixer, you could try using an electric handheld whisk. You just need to stand there and hold it. So you can't do anything else while it's whisking, which isn't too much of a problem, but it will just require a bit more patience from you as you stand there and hold it. So we've got our whisk attachment. Let's move to our eggs. I'm using six eggs. It's six, that's it's six. Six eggs. 
Um, and the important thing when it comes to the eggs, make sure they are room temperature. Don't pull them straight out of the fridge because you're not going to get as much of a rise out of the sponge. There is no raising agent in this sponge cake. So in order for it to get nice and high and be light and fluffy in the middle, we need to whip lots of air into it. So it's going to whip easier if your eggs are at room temperature. Really important. So we're just going to crack the eggs into the bowl of your mixer. If you're a bit worried that you're going to get shell, if you're, if you're not confident about cracking eggs thinking you might get shell in there, just do it into another bowl first and um, something that you can get into quite easily and then you can retrieve any egg shell that might accidentally fall in. So six eggs go in there and then we're going to, um, taking our whisk, we're just going to allow that to begin to, to lightly, or not lightly, to begin to whip together while we get some of the other ingredients ready. So this might be a little bit noisy this class because this needs to be on for quite a bit of time. So I apologize in advance if there's any, lots of, if there's a bit of noise more than normal. I'll push it over here. I'll get it out of the way. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna get it. So um, that by the way is on medium speed. It's about medium speed and I want to get it to be light and fluffy but not not really hard and set. So just kind of light, a little bit frothy, that might take a couple of minutes. While that's happening, taking up my bowl and my scales, we're going to weigh off the dry ingredients. So the dry ingredients that we're using in this uh, recipe, um, we're going to be putting in some inulin, which is I suppose our sweetener. It's also our prebiotic, so we're going to put inulin in there first. Make sure that's right. So inulin goes in. And as well as inulin, I'm also going to be using another type of natural sweetener. And this is what I have here. This is a monk fruit sweetener. So a monk fruit sweetener you can buy in the supermarket. It's 100% natural, completely plant-based as well. So you can totally add that. Um, if you can't find monk fruit sweetener, I know that Sucrin also do a natural sweetener as well. Um, and another one that you can get is an xylitol sweetener too. So that's up to you what sweetener you use. Remember, it's not a sugar, it is 100% natural. It won't spike your insulin or raise your blood glucose. So it's really good for diabetics and it's really low in calories. So those two get mixed together. As well as, have a look at that. That's actually good. Turn you off for now. As well as uh, cream of tartar. So cream of tartar is gonna help there to keep our eggs nice and firm when they when they are whipping and when they are baking, which is important because we want light as air sponge and that's what's gonna do it for us is that little bit of, bit of cream of tartar that we have there. So that is just gonna get a bit of a stir. Over here, I'll come back into the shot. I went too far away. I'm just gonna put in just a little, oops. Oops, let's go. A little bit of vanilla essence. Just a little bit. Give that a bit of a mix. And now, this is the part where it gets real noisy. You guys ready? It gets real noisy. I'm going to turn this now onto high speed, which is really important. We want it on high speed for this part. So put it on high. There we go. Yeah. Get noisy. Get noisy. Noisy earth. I won't talk too much. But what I'm going to do now, while that's getting noisy, is I'm very slowly going to start to incorporate this this um, powdered, this is a dry ingredients, one tablespoon at a time while that's on high the whole time. Hence why I said it's good to have a stand mixer. So one tablespoon at a time. Have a little bit of a pause, let it incorporate. Another tablespoon. Wait for it. Another one. Takes a bit of time, but it doesn't require any uh, sweat, which is good. Maybe sing a little song when you're doing this part. So what we're doing now, 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm getting dust in my mouth. What we're doing now, remember, is we are incorporating air. So we're adding air, and the air is getting locked inside there, so it's giving our sponge that whoo, rise. And that's 100% why I'm doing this in here. About that much left. Tablespoon at a time. It's looking light. I love it. I'll go show you guys what this looks like. It's looking so light and fluffy. Fabulous. Nearly there. One at a time. Take your time. Be patient. It's only that much I'm just gonna. I lost my patience. <laughs> that didn't take long. I want you to see what's happening. It looks phenomenal. It's not yet ready. It needs a little bit longer, but I just want to show you guys, all right? What have we achieved? Look at that! Doesn't that look fabulous? It looks so velvety and smooth. That's what you're after. We haven't finished yet. I am going to put it back on, even though I've incorporated all the dry ingredients. Well, I've incorporated all of the, um, the, the, the sweeteners, the so-called sweeteners, even though they're not sugar, remember, so it's sugar-free. Um, but I would like this in total to be whipping for around about five minutes for a really, this is a really solid heavy-duty machine, so five minutes is good. If you've got one that maybe not quite as heavy-duty as mine, you might even want to whip it for up to seven minutes, because what you're looking for is you're looking for that light, creamy, velvety fluffiness, that's, which is what you've seen from here. But the other thing that you're kind of looking for is you're looking for the volume of when you first started, when you first started whipping the eggs, you need that volume to quadruple. So it starts off here and it literally ends up that, that deep. So that's what you're looking for. Sometimes time is not a good indicator. Um, it's more about the volume because depending on your machine, it might be quicker than mine, it might take longer than mine. So um, definitely keep an eye on it because you're looking for that quadrupling of volume. And as I was saying, depending on your machine, it's gonna take between five to seven minutes on average, but it could be faster and it could actually require more. You just keep an eye on it. That's why I say don't try this by hand unless you've got lots of friends that you can like pass the bowl and then keep passing. It's like a little party game. Everyone has a turn of whipping the sponge. It, it is definitely, and I think about our, I think about our grandmothers who used to do this all by hand and I just literally take my Santa hat, hat off to them. How amazing were they? They could do that by hand because I'll be like, oh gosh, that sounds really tiring. So here we go. Back to this. Another couple of minutes. I'm going to move it out of the way. Oh, move it over there down to here we're gonna just work on the next ingredient so the next ingredient it's up to you what you use here you can either use this is arrowroot you can also use tapioca flour or you could use corn flour it's completely up to you now traditionally a sponge is made with corn flour but I don't like to put a lot of corn products in my food so it's up to you guys what you decide to use I chose to use arrowroot the last time, but I do find that corn flour definitely gives it a lighter sponge. So if you want to go really, really light, and of course corn flour is get the gluten free, it's all gluten free. If you want to go really, really light with it, go corn flour. If you don't mind it being just a little tiny bit heavier, and you want to stay, stay away from corn products, then go for something like arrowroot, which is there, or tapioca flour or tapioca starch work as well, still gluten free. So I am going to use corn flour this time, because why not? I do want it quite light, I have to admit. And what we want to do with the corn flour, let's turn that down a little bit. It's looking good, it's looking good. What we want to do with the corn flour is we want to sift it. I need to get back to my bowl. So I'm going to weigh off my corn flour, or arrowroot, or tapioca. Weigh it off. It's all kind of the same thing, they're all starches. And what we're looking for is the starch component to give us a lightness to the sponge without making it heavy, which is really important. So now that I've weighed off my, my um, starch there, I'm gonna sift it. This is important, because you don't want to have any lumps. Because lumps will mean you have lumps in your sponge, which is not cool. So make sure you give it a really good sift. And we're actually going to sift it more than once, would you believe? Getting rid of all the lumps. So that's the first sift. Ready to go. 
Next thing I'm going to think about doing is cleaning up my board. Yes. Next thing I'm thinking about doing is lining my cake tins. So the type of cake tins I'm using, I'm using two springform tins because it's just going to be really easy for me to take the sponge out when it's cooked. If you don't have springform tins, springform tins, you can use a normal cake tin, um, but it's up to you. If, you. if you have got these, I would definitely suggest that you use them. Just makes it a little bit easier for removal. So, a bit of baking paper, of course. Make sure you've got baking paper 100% here on this one. Otherwise, it will stick. That goes down. Look how well lined that is now, eh? Easy, easy cheesy. And now for the sides, that's easy as well. You're going to take a couple of strips, a couple of even strips, remember a little bit of glue aka cooking oil, just around lightly lightly, that's going to help this to stick. And then that one as well. You can see we've just got a little bit of a gap there, so I'm just going to take up a small piece. Remember, if we want this to be completely, completely lined all over, give that little small piece a bit of a, a bit of glue, a bit of spray, and there we go. Yes, I got a question. Oh, um, as soon as the trifle or the sponge is cooled, you can make the trifle. So you don't have to wait at all. You just have to basically wait for it to cool, which takes, you know, probably about an hour for it to cool. But not long at all. All right. That's on like that. Once again, we're going to add some glue. Beep. It's a nice job to do while that's, that's doing that. You can do this. I love to make sure that all my time is efficiently and effectively used up when I'm in the kitchen. <clears throat> I've got um, cornflour dust or something in my throat. I'm gonna need to do this. <laughs> oh, cheers everyone. Cheers everybody. All right, that goes in. And yes, guess what? This is a healthy martini. It's a healthy martini. Don't you worry, it is a healthy martini. I'm going to teach you guys how to make that healthy martini in a couple of days, actually. All right. Last but not least, that little piece just goes there. And then we've got two nicely lined tins. Right. I am absolutely happy. Well, firstly, I'm happy that I've got my healthy skinny martini here. Cheers. This is, um, I did a, bit of, I did a bit of cocktail testing for us today. I know it's a hard life, isn't it? Hard life. This is the last one that I tested, and it's a goodie. It's a lemon martini. It's absolutely wonderful. All right, so it's a lemon prebiotic martini, even better. But anyway, I digress. Over to our sponge. Gosh, look, guys. That's fabulous, isn't it? Oh, it looks like marshmallow. It looks like marshmallow. It is, and it's kind of this beautiful, almost custard color. It's very light absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to our once sifted corn flour I'm going to remember I'm gonna sift it again this should work and I'm gonna sift it straight over to the top of our bowl right, here we go here we go just like that now we've got it twice sifted I'm really confident that there is no lumps in there. So taking up a really big spoon somewhere. Big spoon. There you are. Taking up a really big spoon. You want to start to fold the corn flour or the starch, you know, the tapioca starch or the arrowroot into the mix. And you're doing this with really big gentle movement movements. You need to really avoid being too rough here. This is not the time to be heavy handed. This is a time for gentleness. This is the time 
to be very light and loving and tender with the food. If you start getting in there and wanting to, you know, whack the daylights out of it, you're going to be whacking out all that air and your sponge will not rise. So avoid the temptation of wanting to be a little bit quick and get through and, you know, and, and whisk too heavy handedly or fold too heavy handedly. Just be gentle with it. Just like that. Big folds. Get, make sure you get right down. Expose if there's any more dry flour that needs to be incorporated, and then that's all we do. That is the sponge mix made. So we go back to our tins. You could do this in one really big tin, or you know, if you're only making one small sponge, half the recipe as well. This is six eggs, you could totally do three, and then we just pour. Ooh, look at it. Oh gosh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It is stunning. I've, you know, I've never been like a massive sponge eater except for in trifle, but looking at this makes me want to eat it and the smell that's coming off it is really gorgeous as well. It's not sugary sweet, you know, because of the, the types of sweeteners that we're using are not sugary sweet. They're just mellow and you get the most wonderful, like I said, it's almost like a custard like aroma coming off it. I suppose you got the corn flour in there, which is definitely custardy. You've got the, um, the bit of vanilla goes in there as well. So it definitely reminds me of, um, of custard. Yep, happy. Happy, happy, happy. Okay, so now, oh, it tastes good even raw. Yummy. So now, what we need to do is pop this into the oven. I have my oven set on 160 degrees Celsius, which is 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I have a word of caution when it comes to baking it in the oven. I have a word of caution for you guys. If your oven runs really hot, which mine does, I suggest you turn your oven down to 150 degrees Celsius. So take it down by 10 degrees, because you can always just leave it in there for longer. Um, so just be aware that this doesn't take long to cook and all ovens are different so you'll get different results than what I got and I'll show you what I got in a second which is very interesting so um, this now goes into the oven and it's going to be in there for around about like I said depending on your oven 30 minutes to 40 minutes maximum that's all it needs all right off to the oven we go No, we don't because there's something in the oven. I'm gonna get something out of the oven first. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> Roasting trays. There we go. All right. So about 30 minutes. Those will be ready. But of course I prepared some in advance, and I've got, I want to show you guys what I what I did in advance. And yes, I made these before the cocktails. If you're asking, wondering, I made these before I started testing cocktails. And I have to, look, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna show you guys what happened, but I think it's really important that you guys see that we are all human. So this is my sponge that is overcooked. <laughs> it was probably in the oven for about five to 10 minutes too long. And we got a really brown top, but it's okay. Look at the base, lovely, right? Still lovely and golden. It actually does not matter. Do you know why? Because remember, this is going into a trifle. So we're gonna be cut, oh, look at that. We're gonna, it's like a frisbee. We're gonna be cutting this up anyway. So I can just slice off that top bit just really thinly with a serrated knife and get rid of it and it'll be absolutely fine. But I think what we just need to be really aware, especially coming into Christmas, that everyone makes little mini mistakes. And no one at the end of the day is even gonna know that I left this in the oven for five to 10 minutes too long. Because I'm just gonna very carefully, like you can literally just peel it off. Look, just peel it off. So just remember guys, if you make mistakes, just keep going. You know, just, just remember that the only one who's probably gonna know something like this is you. Well, actually all of you guys watching is gonna know too. Oh, he wants to eat it. He's like, oh, yeah, you can eat that. <laughs> Keep going, because look what's happened underneath. Gorgeous, that's gorgeous underneath. So you don't have to worry, and I think it's really important. And that's what I want to show you guys, is that everyone makes mistakes. 
and like I said, this is before I started testing the cocktails as well. This was just me getting ready. Maybe I was excited because I was testing cocktails and I forgot it was in the oven. But we do that because life is busy and we are busy. And it's really important just to relax and breathe. And just remember, everyone makes mistakes and every mistake can be fixed. This does not, this does not require me throwing it away and starting again because that would be a waste of ingredients. It would be a waste of my time when all I need to do is just peel off the top. And if I was actually serving it as a Victoria sponge, which you can do, and I'll show you how in a second, um, I would peel off, come down, so you can see. I would do this, I'll peel off the, I'll peel off the brown bits. No one need no, right? Actually, this is that's pretty good, the brown bits, eh? They taste pretty good. There's nothing wrong with the brown bits. Mahi likes them. I would peel those off, and then I would actually serve it that way around. I would put my coconut whipped cream on there, and you guys, you're right there, stealing my, <laughs> stealing all my brown bits of my sponge. Jeez. Um, I would, um, gosh, I, forgot, I lost my train of thought. My, of course, yeah. she's naughty. Right, I would, um, like, seriously, what I would do is I would peel off the brown bits. I would have that as the top, and then I would have that as the middle, just like that, right? No one can see. No one can see. Look, and that one's good too. Oh, he's in, oh, he's in better. You know what? I just realized I'd do that. Yes, I'd peel off that. That would then be the top. Ooh, good Victoria sponge, right? And I'd peel that bit off there, just that bit off there. I would then layer the middle there with my coconut whipped cream, which we made a couple of days ago. You guys were part of that video. You saw that. It's also in the ebook, Bridges Healthy Christmas. I'll put on my coconut whipped cream. And then I would do this. Now this is my homemade jam. This is my chia, berry, and rose jam. Sugar-free, of course. So you can make a Victoria sponge using the jam, using some coconut whipped cream, dairy-free, sugar-free, and even if you did that, he's still eating the, the crispy bits, even if you did that, doesn't matter. You can still layer it up, ice it off with a little bit of inulin, and you have the most beautiful Victoria sponge. Every problem has a solution, when it, even when it comes to cooking. Even when it comes to cooking, and look at that. Even husbands love those little crispy bits. Isn't that wonderful? So every problem has a solution, and, um, and uh, the only, I mean, if it was completely black, of course, you might want to have to, you know, redo it, but that's fine, because remember what's underneath is wonderfulness. Just peel that top bit off. And I will be using, because I want to show you guys that it's okay, I will be using this sponge tomorrow during um, our day six of our 12 cooking days to Christmas, when we are going, look, see, still wonderful. Look at that. No one, no one need know. No one need know what's going on in there. Um, but we will be, I will be using these sponges to make our trifle, just to show you guys that it absolutely can work. But look at that, light as air, right? That is light as air. Wait, 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 wait. That is wonderful. That is your sponge. That is your sponge masterclass. That is how you don't even worry if you have a little thing that doesn't quite go your way. Don't worry about it. Chances are, chances are, unless it's completely black and gone duck, you're going to be the only one who's going to know. And you know what? Don't beat yourself up. Don't be too hard on yourself. Think. What else could I do with this to create something amazing? And chances are there's a solution. There's always a solution. This is how we do it in restaurants all around the world because chefs make mistakes as well. We do it all the time. We're busy. You're busy. It's absolutely okay. So I hope you enjoyed today's little, little class, little master class. I am excited for tomorrow. As I said, tomorrow for me is like the pinnacle of um, Christmas cooking, which is trifle, trifling, trifling. <laughs> we'll be trifling together tomorrow. The class is coming you at lunchtime, 12 o'clock, it is a daytime one. If you're at work during the day, don't worry. Um, you can always revisit it and watch it. Just go onto Bridget's Kitchen, onto the page, and you'll see the video there, and you can watch it when you're ready. And they're always there. You can always watch them when you're ready as well. Um, I'll be testing more cocktails tomorrow. Oh, geez, it's going to be a fun couple of days, I tell you. And then on Wednesday, we are doing, and you do not want to miss this class, on Wednesday, we are doing healthy cocktails for Christmas class. On Wednesday, it's gonna be hosted in the evening, so you've got no excuses. I've got 12 cocktails. <laughs> 
I've, I haven't tested all 12 today. Let, let me just say, but I've done quite a few. And, um, and, and you know what? This has been my favorite so far, the lemon martini. I do like a good martini, a little dirty martini. I do like that. This has been my favorite so far, but we're doing, we're doing things with red wine, gin, tequila, bourbon, vodka, and white wine. Seriously. Oh, and champagne. You do not want to miss that. So that's happening on Wednesday. So tomorrow is our trifle making class. Do not miss that. It's going to be fabulous. I'm going to use my light as air sponge. We're going to use a sponge. We're going to make a gorgeous trifle. Um, we're going to also um, talk about how to layer this, the trifle and, and variations on the trifle because everyone's kind of got their favorite and this is hopefully a new one for you and then on wednesday hump day is healthy cocktail making class which means you get to hear all the tips and tricks so you can enjoy yourself these Christmas uh, silly season and you can do it and you can actually do it with a lot of class too which is very nice so um, get out your martini classes for Wednesday if you don't already have a cocktail shaker pop on down to a Kmart and buy you one you're gonna need it we will see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock for the trifle making class and don't forget Wednesday exciting yay cocktails all right guys thank you for joining me tonight I hope you enjoyed that class and we will see you all tomorrow <laughs>